What's up YouTube? Good afternoon. Today I'm with my friend Nick as usual and we have two objectives for today. Objective number one is to test out the new iPhone 11 Pro Max. Holy crap that's a long name but Nick's got his right here. I have one in my pocket as well. I haven't pulled it out yet but we're going to test those out from a photography standpoint. So my question is will it be able to replace at least to a certain degree, the Leica Q that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. We're gonna find out today and see just how capable the iPhone 11 is. And in addition to that, you just saw me putting my trailer onto the back of my truck. It's like 32 degrees outside today, and so objective number two is to test out whether or not that trailer is going to be good for camping in the winter. I think it's going to be, but we're gonna test it out today to see for sure. But first things first, Nick and I, we gotta get us some food. New York, you know that Wegmans is the greatest place up here to get subs. So we made a quick stop there. Now we're hunkered up in the Tiger Maw, just eating it in the Wegmans parking lot pretty much. But uh, after this, we're gonna get on the road and head out to do some camping. So we just made it to our first location of the day. I just parked the truck right here. Unfortunately, this is not our campsite. It's a really, really cool spot as you can see right here, but it's not where we're gonna camp for the night because I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to stay here overnight. I'm 99% confident. So we're gonna camp somewhere else, but for the time being, we're gonna check this spot out a little bit and we're gonna test the photography capabilities of our new iPhone 11s. Right there, yeah. So one of the biggest differences between my old iPhone, which was the iPhone 8 Plus, and this iPhone is that this one now comes with an ultra wide angle lens. And so that ultra wide angle lens is equivalent to, I think like a 13 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, which is insanely wide. This lens, for example, is a 16 millimeter lens. So 13 millimeters is significantly wider than 16. And Nick right now is recording me, which is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> so I really like the fact that it has that ultra wide angle lens. So that shot that I just took, I'll show you it right now if I haven't showed you it already. I took that with the 13 millimeter lens. And so I really like that the sun is coming from that direction. It was casting a little bit of a shadow behind Nick. And so I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna throw it into Lightroom on my phone, crank the contrast up and see what I can do editing that photo. In addition to the ultra wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 Pro, it also has the ability to do portrait mode now with its wide angle lens. So it has three lenses. One is a telephoto, one is the wide angle, and one is the ultra wide angle. So with the wide angle, which is the middle lens, now you can do portrait mode, like I said, as well. And so that's awesome for taking photos where you really wanna get like some of the environment in the background, but then you also wanna isolate your subject in the foreground. So I took a picture of Nick, right in front of the lake a couple minutes ago, which was really cool. I took it with the wide angle lens in portrait mode. And then I also took a picture of these leaves back here on the ice, which I thought came out super cool because I was able to isolate the leaves in the foreground and then really blur out the background because I didn't really care about what was in the background there. So that's a really, really cool capability of the new iPhone. So if you follow my channel closely, you know that I shoot on the Leica Q, which is a fixed lens camera that has a 28 millimeter f1.7 lens, which gives you the ability to isolate your subject in the foreground with a pretty wide angle lens and then blur out the background, which is a really, really unique capability of that lens. But the iPhone does more or less the exact same thing. And so now having that capability in the iPhone that I carry around literally everywhere with me, every single place I go is a really, really cool capability. It's getting a little bit cold outside. The sun is starting to come down. Unfortunately, this time of year, the sun sets so unbelievably early. So it's like four o'clock right now and the sun is already starting to come down and it's getting really, really cold outside. So we're gonna head over to our campsite, start getting stuff ready. We might start a fire or something like that, but I'm thinking that tonight is gonna be a good opportunity to test the night mode capabilities of the iPhone. So if you don't already know, they actually released like new firmware that gives you the ability to do handheld long exposures. And I've done a little bit of testing with it, but nothing super serious. So tonight I wanna give that a shot. After 
after about 40 minutes of effort, we finally got the fire up and running. All the wood here was completely soaked. So we went through all sorts of paper just to get this thing up and running, but finally got it going. It seems like it's gonna be self-sustaining at this point. So we shouldn't have to be like wafting air onto it to keep it going anymore. But I think the plan is right now just to hang out, chill around the fire as the sun goes down for the next 40 or so minutes. And uh, tonight, once it gets a little bit darker out, I'm gonna try to take advantage of the fire in conjunction with the low light capabilities on this phone and see if we can get any cool photos. So we just made coffee and wrapped up things here at camp. I think the plan right now is to head back home because we both have some obligations at home today, but I think that both of our missions that we set out to accomplish were extremely successful. Number one, this camper is more than good for camping in the winter. I mean, it's only like 30 out right now. It's not super cold, but it stayed plenty warm in there for us last night. And I have like this little propane heater thing, which will help out a little bit when it gets even colder. And in addition to that, I think that the iPhone was super impressive from a photography standpoint. I took some night photos last night. I'll show you them right now that were super, super impressive. One of those was actually a 10 second handheld long exposure. So we're gonna head home right now and then I'll chat with you a little bit more about these photos once we're there. All right, YouTube, we are back at home. So let's wrap this thing up and chat about whether or not the iPhone 11 Pro Max can replace my $5,000 Leica Q. And so the reason I bought this camera is for a couple different reasons. There's three things that it's particularly good at. Number one are its low light capabilities. It has an extremely fast lens with an f1.7 aperture. It has optical image stabilization, and it's a relatively wide lens. You can handhold decently long, long exposures. Number two, the thing that makes it really unique is the fact that it can get a really shallow depth of field at a relatively wide angle. So again, it has that 28 millimeter f1.7 lens. So that's definitely a unique characteristic of this that not a lot of other lenses out there can do. There certainly are lenses that can do this as well. But the third thing that makes this really, really special is the size of it. The size of this camera versus what it's capable of doing is really, really impressive. However, this camera or this phone, the iPhone 11 Pro Max came out just about a month ago from Apple, and it does a lot of the same things extremely, extremely well. So number one, it is now extremely impressive in low light situations. This picture and this picture were both handheld photos taken with a 10 second long exposure, came out extremely, extremely clean, and I am super, super happy with that. So this is nearly as good as this is in low light. Additionally, number two, one of the new benefits of this camera, same thing as the Leica, is that this is now capable of a very shallow depth of field at a wide angle lens. So this, the wide angle lens on this is about a 25 millimeter full frame equivalent versus the 28 millimeter on this. And now with portrait mode on the iPhone 11 Pro, you can get a very similar effect to what you get on this camera. And then third, the thing that makes this camera special for me is the portability aspect of it. This iPhone, obviously, look at these two next to one another, it's obviously even more portable than the Leica Q. And I can't even remember a time in my entire life for the past 10 years where I didn't leave my house without my phone. And so this is considerably more portable than this camera. So the question I guess at this point is, is this camera even worth having for $5,000? Whereas I already have this just because it's my phone and it can more or less do everything that this camera can do. So the answer for whether or not the iPhone 11 Pro can replace my Leica Q is, and a lot of people aren't gonna be super happy with this, kinda. So this will, in some cases, absolutely replace my Leica Q, 100%. It takes more or less the same photos that this can take with the exception of one thing, and that's when you try to edit the photos. When you take photos with this camera or with this phone, it's really hard to get the same effects as you can get with this camera. For example, yesterday I edited these two photos, this one and this one that I took with my Leica Q about a month ago. And if I show you the before and after right now, 
you'll see that I made some massive, massive edits to those photos. I mean, the before looks almost nothing like the after looks. And if you were to try to replicate that using the iPhone 11, the photo would fall apart completely. It would look like crap. And to be honest, you just cannot get those same effects with the iPhone 11 Pro. So to summarize, really, the iPhone 11 Pro is going to replace my Leica Q in situations where I know I'm not going to want to edit the photos or where I know I don't wanna make tremendous massive adjustments to the colors and the way that the photos look. In situations where I know I'm gonna take a green forest and make it look like an incredible fall foliage picture, this isn't gonna be capable of that. I'm gonna to need to use my Leica Q or maybe the Sony a7 III that I'm shooting on right now. But in situations where there's not gonna be a lot of editing going on, this absolutely is going to take a lot more photos. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button down below, definitely hit that button. I'd appreciate it big time. We're coming up right now on 2,000 subscribers, which is absolutely insane. And we just crossed over the one year threshold on this channel. And I am super blown away that there's 2,000 people or at least almost 2,000 people that are following this channel. So I appreciate it big time. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you guys in my video next week. Peace.